All right. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Austin here again one more time to go over uh, Section B for you. Now, when it comes to Section B, if you want to receive um, full consideration, again, you want to be preparing Section A and Section B for all marching band, symphonic band, and wind ensemble, right? At least prepare Section B if you don't feel like doing Section A. Um, but again, I highly, highly, highly encourage everyone to be practicing both Section A and Section B. So uh, here at the beginning, we've got a two octave concert F major scale. Not everyone's gonna have a two octave concert F major scale. A lot of woodwinds, a couple of brass will, but not everyone. So um, again, when you're playing your scale, you're gonna pick a something, you're gonna pick a tempo that you feel like you can play it most comfortably at, right? So for here, uh, I'm gonna put this for a little bit of variation. I'm gonna put this at 90 beats per minute. So here's an example of the two octave concert F major scale. So again, paying attention to forte playing nice and full and then also paying attention, I slurred up and then I tongued down. Very important distinctions there. That's what your band directors, the high school band directors are gonna be listening to. Now, here we've got a musical excerpt. Now, I think these musical excerpts are actually kind of challenging. I think they're challenging in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of dynamics and articulations to pay attention to. There's also key signature here. I hear, whenever I hear students auditioning and trying out for these excerpts or trying out for these ensembles, I hear a lot of people in musical excerpt B1, I hear a lot of people miss this key signature right here, right? So make sure that you're paying close attention to what your key signature is and applying that to all of your notes. This is a slow legato piece. We wanna hear you guys try to be as musical and as smooth as possible with a nice contrast uh, in dynamics. So here's 64 beats per minute. I'm gonna play this excerpt for you. So that one's tricky. Big tip with this one is that especially with clarinets, it's in your throat tones, F sharp. We call that a throat tone. And so um, throat tones need good air support. And so when you're thinking about piano, make sure you're not playing too soft, right? Make sure you're still getting a nice resonant sound and not a very scratchy, very airy sound, right? Here is the musical exit B2. Now, this one, again, take a look at that key signature. It's the last note in the 16th notes here. It's an E flat for clarinets. It's different notes for other instruments. I hear a lot of students miss this note because they don't pay attention to this key signature, right? So um, this one is tricky for a lot of different instruments because it really explores your range. Clarinets, we're playing up high. Brass instruments, we're going back and forth between our highs and our lows. And it's also got a wide range of dynamics as well, too. I'm going to play this excerpt for you, and I'm going to point out some things for you to try working on and to do your best so that you can um, really show off your technical ability on these things you want to know. So I'm going to put this metronome at 90. I recommend, no matter how good you are, I recommend everybody put this one at 90. If you feel like you could do faster than 90, by all means, go for it. But in order to really get it clean, I recommend you put it at 90. Okay? Musical excerpt, B2. Uh, when you guys are doing this, a couple things to pay attention to. Uh, first things first, again, paying attention to that fourth, 16th note, make sure that you guys are getting it correct. 
here in this fourth measure, do you notice it's tongue to, then slur to? A lot of people flip that around. It's just, I guess it's just kind of something natural that we try to do. We try to flip that around. So make sure it's ta-ta-ta-ta. Tongue, tongue, slur, tongue, right? In measure four here. Pay attention then to this time signature change here. Three, four, right? You've got a new time signature here. So the feel gets a little bit different in there. When you guys start getting into uh, this measure right here, you notice how you've got accents at the end and you also have to do a day crescendo. Whew, it's tough. I recommend you guys start off practicing it slow. Start off at one dynamic and really focus on getting the rhythm and the articulation correct. All right, really trying to make those accents pop. Then you can start adding in the day crescendo. The more full and louder you can start at the beginning of this measure here, the easier it's gonna be to make that happen. Right? So really focus in on making sure that you're getting, uh, the, you're spending the time to get the articulation right and then adding in the dynamics. In here, in this measure right here, if you think about creating four sixteenth notes and when we start subdividing our notes, uh, oops, uh, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen, my pen is not wanting to work with me right now. So like, if you remember, we've talked about this type of rhythm here, part of my awful drawing, but you can tell that those are four sixteenth notes. The way we count 16th and 8th notes like this is we want to uh, subdivide them like how we normally do an 8th note, right? So we would say, or 16th notes, we say one eanda. Then you're going to take the 8th note, the two 16th notes that correlate with that 8th note, you're going to combine them together. So it's one E, uh, two E, uh, four, right? So we're just kind of skipping out the ant here of the 16th note. One E, a uh, two E, a uh, four, right? Oh, I'm sorry, three, whoops. Even now, you see, I didn't pay attention to that time signature. One E, a two E, a three, right? One E, a two E, a three. Take some time and really practice that with the metronome. If I put the metronome around 70, it's gonna sound like this. Right, so you can start to hear how that rhythm starts to combine together. Um, and then at the end, triplets, right? We need to make sure that we're fitting three triplet eighth notes into one beat. Three triplet eighth notes get one beat. One and two and triplet one. One and two and triplet one. Uh, it sounds like this. Right, so really make sure that you're thinking about those triplet eighth notes fitting into one beat. A lot of stuff to work on here. Feel free to come back to this video as often as possible. Bookmark where this video starts on that excerpt or any excerpt that you're struggling with um, and just keep working on it. Um, uh, good luck with your interview nights. I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you guys get to meet your new band directors and just love them because I love them. They are super awesome and amazing teachers. Uh, so good luck on your audition. Please let us know if you need any help.